if you did not attend this year's uh, Harvest Money Expo, I don't know why you missed out, but it was the best, of the, you know, the start of the year. So it just ended, and the theme was farming as a business. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, this is the Handshake here on New Vision TV. We're trying to look at what lessons, what, what do we learn, Paul, from the Harvest Money Expo? It is the third, this was the third, and we see that it has been growing in mm. numbers, in participation. Absolutely. And uh, uh, long ago, the shows would just bring fat cows, <laughs> and, you know. Now it is more of education. What are people learning? It seems it is teaching more and more, but what especially do we pick? No, um, okay, first of all, uh, it's amazing how many people are interested at all in agriculture. Oh, yes. the, the kind of people who turned up are from all walks of life, mm. slay queens and... <laughs> I know. <laughs> and all sorts of people are in that place. That was, that was very interesting. But yeah. also, uh, what is also interesting is the amount of things people are doing in this country. Uh, clearly, I think, and, and that's why I think also the theme was uh, doing a culture as a business. F yeah, farming as we a business. We're clearly not communicating what we are doing. There was Absolutely. amazing stuff uh, there. There was uh, there were innovations in, uh, in, in practices like, okay, the machines being used. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, there was, uh, they were displaced by researchers, what they have oh managed yeah. to produce. There were seedling companies, uh, seed seed companies that yes. were dishing out seeds. Uh, the, 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 I mean, there was also financing of ag agriculture by s certain uh, financial institutions. So it was amazing. I, it was a good place to bring all these people together. Mm. And the interaction was amazing. It yeah. was amazing, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, does we keep seeing a shift from uh, the original subsistence farming m to more commercialized. Everything is commercialized. Even if I have a small piece of land, and I put my onions there, I want to sell them. Uh, what, what has the expo really, has, has it impacted people that much? Well, um, I think it has. Uh, we've, had, we've had testimonies of people who say that they've started becoming, taking their farming seriously mm. since the first expo. Yes. Um, and there were useful, uh, there, were, there were training sessions by people who have actually done these things, not theoretical oh, yeah? stuff. So. Oh, yeah. So you could see, even it's as you said, small pieces of land. People mm. are really doing uh, serious financial, uh, serious uh, farming. I think what's happening, and you talk going to your thing of subsistence to commercialization, is mm. that um, as the population grows, um, as, uh, as as the population grows, as uh, land pressure increases, oh yeah? we have to become more and more efficient with the land we have. We to have, use. yeah. And that would mean improving our farming practices. Uh, you know, the, the, the use of, uh, this could be d helped by extension services, uh, the use of irrigation so that we can have, uh, you know, more seasons in a year mm -hmm. rather than two, we should actually be having three in many cases. Yep. Uh, and the use of fertilizer, the use of uh, pesticides and all those kind of things are going to have to become more serious mm. to increase the yields. Because yeah. right now we are... We are our, 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 our farming agriculture is at the mercy of God. We just put absolutely. a new check. It's if it comes out, it's okay. I think it's blessings from him. No, absolutely. Mm. I, I think that, that, that's been our major challenge. Yeah. Uh, because of the abundance that we enjoy, we, 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 we have not had pressure to be very systematic about it. Mm -hmm. But that's changing, as I said, because of land pressure and uh, the po growing population and even the weather changes. And the economy challenges, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So it's, it's inevitable. We're going to have to and harvest money. The harvest money, the, yeah. the pull out, and harvest money, the expo, which happens once a year, mm. is helping to shift. Because also a, a mind shift, a mind, mindset oh, yes, change. Mind, yeah. Sh uh, change you, you talked about uh, changing uh, things. There's also, there's also value addition. Yes. How, how, how d do we see this improving? That was also there in the in the harvest money thing. Mm. I mean, one way, of course, of increasing household incomes is to not only sell the raw stuff, oh yeah. but can we push it a bit mm -hmm. uh, down the line? Can we can we push it down the line? Mm -hmm. So there's also that, and and very basic technologies. I mean, I saw a guy, you know, crushing. He had a small machine that crushes, uh, kind of squeezes juice out of sugar cane. 
It was amazing. It was an amazing thing. And uh, oh. uh, the test he was he was demonstrating, you could uh, drink a cup, you pay for it, of course, but you would lace it with a bit of lemon, and it was an amazing taste. So who knows? In a few years, somebody will commercialize that. It'll be a, a, a I think, winner. I think we need uh, like a biennial expo because uh, the rate at which people are, uh, uh, you know, innovating things and uh, even the need, the, the need, need for yes. the information. I yes. mean, like uh, I think I saw some figures where they said that on the first day, which was Friday, mm -hmm. uh, Friday, yes, ten thousand people uh, came through the gates uh, wow. to, to to the expo. The weekend there were much more. There, there were there a bit more people yeah. on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, and even in the training sessions were packed to capacity. You just get the impression that there's more, n there's need for actually, maybe who knows? I don't, I don't know what management is thinking, but to break it up into I think either I two I years would or imagine, I think so. quarterly or something like that. Yeah, uh, Paul, in the budget, the uh, budget framework paper for this for the financial year 2019-2020, uh, they reduced the agricultural budget. Did you notice? Did they reduce? I, th I think they they reduce the percentage as a percentage of the budget. Yes, mm. a percentage of the budget. Yes. W don't you think when they need to, you know, put in a lot more? Yeah. I, I, w y well, yes. I <laughs> think they need to put in a lot more. The question is, where do you put it? Uh, I think th what the government really needs to do urgently is mm -hmm. to beef up its extension services. Oh, yeah. Extension services. Those are the people who go out and tell farmers how to do, do ABCD as as a real starter because. Yeah. Um, our farmers are still using a lot of rudimentary methods of farming. If you just tell them, for example, proper spacing, mm -hmm. the productivity of their land can improve. Uh, there can be more investment in things like irrigation schemes um, and uh, probably markets uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in the rural areas so, so these people can get a place to sell. Of course, uh, the agricultural budget is not in isolation. Yeah. All the roads that are built, they help agricultural produce oh move yes. up and down. Yes, so we shouldn't true. ignore that's that. True. That's true. Uh, the security. <laughs> so, but yes, but more specifically, extension services. Yeah. And uh, some of that infrastructure, uh, irrigation schemes and markets. I, I noticed you were moderating one of the sessions uh, where Absolutely. about uh, markets, international markets. International mm. markets. Uh, how about we tap into our local markets. How do we do that? How do we get people to There was actually another session stuff. on that one. Mm. There was another session on that one. And uh, it turns out that, uh, that one, one, there's almost no need for any part of this country to go hungry. It just yes. seems to be a disconnect between uh, the sources of demand, the demand and the sources of supply. Of supply, yes. So, so th the communication has to be improved. Mm -hmm. It's of course uh, happening already with the mobile phones and all that kind of business, but also road networks and transport networks have to be improved and that kind of business. Mm. Uh, secondly, uh, as I said earlier, you know, our farmers just need to be do better farming. They're doing, they're, they're, they're not maximizing even the, the land they have. So, for example, in coffee, um, the Uganda Coffee Development Authority estimates that uh, the output of a hectare of coffee is in, in, on average in Uganda is 0 0.5 tons. Mm. But I know people in Mitiana who are doing 2.5 tons per hectare, so five times yes. in the same country yes. and doing very m not very much more than other people could do here. Mm -hmm. So that has to also be done for our local market because there's, there's a lot of demand, for example, for our food from the region. It is. And that's another reason why we need to in, uh, produce even more. Because the prices are much better there. We could have a situation where we send all our food <laughs> out <laughs> and we, you know, we are here living on portion and mm -hmm. beans or worse. So yeah, the, the, the markets are there, there's no doubt. Local markets and everything from livestock uh, to crops, everything. Oh well, I, I still think we should do another expo, perhaps Absolutely. in the last quarter of Can the year. Tell Robert. Uh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>